Hello everyone, my name is Holly Chan and my master's research is called If Walls Could Talk. My research explores the generation of augmented space, which aims to enhance physical and social engagement with architectural form. As modern humans, we have become to move instinctively through space in a mundane routine. We move from our homes through the public environment to our workplaces and back again. In this daily routine, we have limited physical interactions with the built environment. The interactions we do have are purely functional. Opening a door or a window, turning on a light switch or walking on the ground beneath us. The public's everyday interactive experiences with the built environment are changing. Over the last three decades, our world has become increasingly enriched with digital technology and information. With the advancements of mobile phones, digital media is accessible throughout the day and in any location. As we move through our everyday routines, we've become further distracted within the virtual realm of our handheld devices. As I walk to this building today, as I've done almost every day for the last five years, I walk in a mode of autopilot. I often have headphones in, listening to music or a podcast. At the traffic lights, I'll stop and scroll through social media. As I enter the building, my thoughts are preoccupied on my destination and the tasks of the day ahead. I'm not consciously present in the physical environment. Designers are often confronted with addressing the competing interests of public attention. While the presence of technology and information increases, architecture as a practice must develop to combine virtual and physical capabilities. Digital technology has the potential to enhance architecture with a higher level of interactivity, creating the opportunity for communities to develop meaningful connections with place. As Rufik Anadol states, Despite what is seemingly a lack of social awareness as users concentrate on their screens, photogenic architecture and media content can provide opportunities to allow alternative interactions with people and environments. There is an opportunity to transfer the engagement we have with our mobile devices to the built environment, developing physical social interactions rather than just virtual ones. This body of research frames the following question. How can physical action and virtual interaction be combined to engage the public with architectural space and create more meaningful connections to the built environment? This thesis aims to explore the parameters of augmented space and how it can be integrated into the physical environment. The objectives of this thesis are as follows. Investigate different augmented technologies, understand their strengths and weaknesses, and explore how they can be immersed with physical space. Develop an interactive system that enriches architecture and forms new relationships to the built form. Apply this experience to a specific space and understand how it changes the perceived architectural experience. The basis of this research is the creation of augmented space. Augmented space can be defined as the physical space overlaid with dynamically changing information. Augmented space provides a challenge and an opportunity for many architects to rethink their practice, since architecture will have to take into account the fact that virtual layers of contextual information will overlay the built space. Augmented space can be created in many different forms. It is commonly seen in AR smartphone applications and can be exhibited in the case study Everyday Experiments by Design Research Lab Space 10. The speculative projects challenge how technology can be redefined within the home. Exploring how technology in the home doesn't always mean doing something faster or with more precision. It can simply provide a way to enjoy our homes more, infusing the spaces we have with joyous elements that make you feel happy, calm or safe. Another example of augmented space is Factory 15's Cocoon. The immersive video installation projects an animated film onto a spherical dome, allowing the viewer to be fully immersed within the space and the film. The accomplishment of this project is it augments physical space while allowing the users to continue to exist in their current environment. Augmented space can alternatively be permanently embedded into the physical environment, as seen in Nixon University, the Infinity War. The 30 by 7 meter long LED screen is situated in the lobby space of Nixon Tyres Research and Development Centre. The display transforms the flat wall into its own three-dimensional space, creating a mesmerising installation which changes the spatial experience of the lobby. Augmented space can become more complex through the addition of a reactive system, or, as Refik Anadol calls, synesthetic architecture. 
Synesthetic architecture takes the ideas from augmented space, combining physical space, digital information with the addition of machine learning. Andrell defines the idea and its possibilities. Synesthetic architecture suggests that architects may unfold machine learning into building forms, not just creating, but also redefining space through mixed media. The age of machine intelligence will make our computers, our buildings and our cities more responsive and brain-like. This concept can be exhibited in Anadol's most well-known project, Walt Disney Concert Hall Dreams. In the project, Anadol manipulates data to form a narrative which reflects the building's past. The culmination of the building's memories, combined with machine learning, creates a consciousness of the building. The idea was to mimic how humans dream, processing memories to generate new combinations of images and ideas. Rather than the addition of machine learning, in this body of research, I'm exploring the combination of physical space, digital media, and interaction. Within this thesis, interaction focuses on the relationship between people, digital technology, and the built environment, or is otherwise known as human building interaction. Bill Hillier originally defined human building interaction, stating that it consists of providing interactive opportunities for the people to shape the physical, spatial, and social impacts of their built environment. The addition of interaction to augmented space increases user engagement, enabling the user to become an active participant in the experience. The participant will become the actor rather than just the spectator. This concept is otherwise known as performative architecture, which explores how the user can have a sense of agency, allowing them to exercise their creativity in a space. While the architect still designs the mechanisms of the space, there is an opportunity for the user to inform the atmospheric qualities. Interaction can encourage reflection within the user. This can be exhibited in Dan Graham's Present Continuous Pass. In this piece, Graham challenges the user's perception of time, disrupting time and space to compel the viewer to reconsider their surroundings. Reflective interactions are important as they raise questions and encourage different interpretations of the space. This contextual information enabled the establishment of design principles, which are used as criteria to assess the design research. These principles are based on Donald A. Norman's concepts of emotional design. In his book, he outlines three levels of brain processing, the visceral, the behavioral, and the reflective, each targeted by different techniques and styles of design. Visceral design explores aesthetics and is an instinctive response to how a product looks and feels. The behavioural design regards how a product is used or experienced, and the reflective design targets the emotional and reflective responses of the viewer. The design criteria shown here has been developed to assess the preceding design research. The design criteria outlines the development of an interactive system in response to the three levels of emotional design. The preliminary design exploration was undertaken in three parts, animate, integrate, and react. Animate uses Cinema 4D to create short dynamic animations, which aim to target the brain's visceral response. The exploration links to the ideas presented in Space 10's everyday experiments, that technology and digital media don't always have to make our lives faster or more efficient, but can simply be a way of creating joy, excitement, or engagement. While the animations are visually pleasing, they do not directly represent anything within the physical world or interact with physical space. The second part, Integrate, was a design exploration which aimed to integrate the digital information into the physical environment, resulting in the creation of augmented space. The game engine Unity was used as a design tool. As a gaming software, the program enables the simulation of real world environments. This exploration introduces human interaction in the form of a player within the game environment, enabling the animations to be walked through and around. Unity AR Foundation, an AR application toolkit, was tested with to explore an alternative approach to viewing augmented space through a handheld device. The body tracking feature within the toolkit was also explored using the device's camera to recognise physical human body joints, applying 2D and 3D visuals to the body in virtual space. 
This exploration provided contextual understanding of body tracking, which was applied in further developments. The final part of the preliminary design exploration is React. In this phase, Touch Designer was explored as a design tool. Touch Designer is a visual programming software which uses creative coding to manipulate data into graphic visualizations. Rather than using conventional architectural language, creative coding uses computational language as a design medium. Creative coding is becoming increasingly used within the architecture community. It is a design medium where the computer becomes the partner in the production of the design and the act of crafting a code is a form of design in itself. Digital data of the physical environment is collected through a Microsoft Connect device. The motion sensor device tracks a user's body and the environments around them, translating the physical information into data. These design tests explore interactivity in its most basic form, tracking the human body and actions to express the real world environment through virtual abstraction. Multiple visual compositions were explored, including fluid simulations, solid geometries, particle systems, and the parameters of body tracking within the software. This design exploration served as a learning experience into the processes of creative programming. Through the design exploration, it was established that Touch Designer was the most effective software to enable the production of an interactive system. This preliminary design exploration gave me the tools and techniques to establish a developed design. The following design development uses an iterative process to form a singular complex simulation which aims to meet the outlined design criteria. The iterations begin by exploring form and aesthetics. The initial interaction aims to develop a visually pleasing digital system which will be built on to create a complex interactive system. Depth, a depth mechanism is then developed to avoid creating a two-dimensional digital surface that sits on a two-dimensional physical surface. It was important to create a virtual space in itself rather than just another surface. Scale is then explored to further emphasize the sense of depth and thus intensify the illusion of space. A velocity and time mechanism was added, meaning depending on how fast you move affects how long the orange cells are present. If you move slowly, the cells dis disappear slowly, and the faster you move, the more instant they react. This was introduced to the system so that it is not a static to one physical movement, but enables a unique experience of the system each time. This mechanism links to the ideas of Dan Graham's present continuous past. The mechanism creates a relationship between past users and current users. When a past user has had a long engagement with the space, their mark will remain for the next user to experience, and it enables reflection of the current user to consider the past inhabitants of a space. A sound mechanism was added, which uses the microphone on the device to take real-world sound data and translate the geometry. When sound is made, the tubes move towards the user. The longer and louder the sound is, the more the tubes are translated. A further sound ripple was added to emphasise the visual communication of sound. If someone is to clap or make a loud noise, the colour of the screen will ripple, representing the sound made. The design development examines an alternative to the conventional sensory experience of space, exploring how our senses can be used to produce atmosphere rather than just experience it. The interactive design aims to encourage the user to use their senses to activate the architectural experience. Part one of the design development successfully creates a simulation that can be incorporated into the physical environment to create augmented space. Moving into part two of the design development, I felt that I could further push the aesthetics and depth of the simulation to further enable reflective engagement. I was inspired again by Rufik Anadol's digital starter sculptures, in particular his project machine hallucinations. I liked how even though the sculptures were digital, they still conveyed a natural aesthetic. I felt that if technology was going to be integrated into the built environment, it should not increase technological pressures on the user, but rather use te technology counteractively to immerse people in the physical world. This inspired the generation of part two, which uses a multi-layered particle system to communicate different spatial elements. 
this development is made up of four mechanisms. The first is the user produces the particles. The outline of the user is used to produce the particles within the system. The individual's mark is becoming embedded into virtual space. The particle system has external forces applied, such as wind or turbulence. As time progresses, the remnants of the user's imprint slowly dilutes into digital space. It's a less instantaneous reaction to the last system, but also creates a more poetic interpretation. The second mechanism, the user displaces the particles. As the, user outline, as the user's outline displaces the particles and creates a shadow-like visualization, it, is more, it is, creates a more instant reaction, but is a lot more subtle. When combined with the previous mechanism, the system simultaneously captures the user's shadow and their outline. The system explores how presence can be solidified at different points in time. The third me mechanism is a sound particle system. This enables the particles to react to sound. If the sound is a loud clap, the particles will jolt quickly. The more constant and continuous the sound, for example, music or a continuous stream of voices, the more fluid the particle system becomes. Sound creates an atmosphere in a space. A library is still and quiet, whereas an atrium tends to be loud and a busy atmosphere. The sound particles visualize the sound of the space and thus communicate the atmosphere. This element provides an interesting opportunity for designing for hearing impaired individuals, where they could see what the sound of the space is. The system becomes an interface to the intangible qualities of the building. The fourth mechanism is the second user produces the particles. If a second user is present, an alternative particle system of user-generated particles is displayed. These yellow particles contrast contrast with the original blue particles and fade in and out as the second user enters and leaves the captured area. As we move through the world with our attention captivated in the virtual environment of our mobile devices, we often don't register the presence of another individual. This mechanism is designed to signify the presence of another individual. Even if the first user cannot see the other person, the digital wall visualizes their presence. This mechanism examines how the built environment can play a role in enhancing our social awareness. Through the design development, two different digital systems have been generated. The purpose of this thesis is to explore the development of augmented space. Whilst the digital aspect has been created, there is also a physical component. This practical application section takes the digital systems and applies them to two alternative architectural environments a threshold space and an urban alleyway. The purpose of this is to explore the different opportunities of integrating digital media into the built environment. The chosen threshold is the threshold space of the Victoria University Architecture and Design Campus. This threshold is designed in the space itself but possesses no specific program or use. The space is purely designed to be passed through. Traditionally, threshold spaces would demand attention in the form of a step or a door still and would in influence a change in behaviour of the user. In today's world, many are designed as mundane architectural conventions, becoming so familiar we move through them instinctively with no recognition of transition of place. A threshold is a space that must be passed through as entering a building, providing the ideal opportunity to create a targeted augmented experience. Digital media can capture the public's attention, enticing them to slow down, stop and engage in a place which is designed for passing through. The intervention could encourage people to look up from their screens, to stop, to play, to enjoy before entering the building. A digital system could be easily manipulated, can be easily manipulated, so there is an opportunity to control and alter the atmosphere of entering a building without changing structural or material aspects. The second physical application is the application into an urban alleyway. Unused urban spaces such as alleyways, car parks or public parks can encourage unwanted behaviour and compromise feelings of safety. These spaces often serve no pragmatic purpose and lack a sense of place. 
This can be seen in the alleyway of Luke's Lane in Wellington CBD. The laneway possesses no defining characteristic or program. Lack of lighting and occupation result in the space feeling unpleasant and unsafe. There is an opportunity to activate the laneway through the use of digital interactive installation. The intervention proposes placing the interactive system within the alleyway using LED screens in the window of an adjacent building. The installation will bring light to the space, enticing people to play and interact, resulting in the alleyway becoming populated with human activity. Through embedded digital media, the alleyway can become enlivened with social presence and light, increasing the sense of safety. The two applications show a transformative architectural process, exhibiting the way the architectural surface can be changed, enhanced and reimagined to activate passive space. A key finding from this research is that interactivity is a crucial element in the development of a virtual system. Without the element of interaction, the system risks becoming a mundane feature of everyday life. The physical application highlighted a key learning regarding how the virtual system is embedded into the physical space. Application of augmented space can range from temporary to permanent, which can alter the overall effect of the inter intervention. It is evaluated that augmented space is more successful when it is fully embedded into the architectural structure and form, thus is perceived as part of the building, which enables enhanced interaction with the architecture itself. The research speculates the possibility of digital me media as a form of materiality, which creates the opportunity to flexibly craft atmosphere. Virtual interaction encourages physical activity within the public, enhancing engagement and forming more meaningful relationships to space. Now I invite you to experiment with yourself with the two interactive systems.